What up, everybody? Welcome to the second to last episode of Bag Talk for 2022. It has been an extremely eventful year, and we have a lot to say today because we literally have a million dollars worth of game on this episode. So I really hope y'all stay to the end because it could change your life, and I really mean that. Um, I know you see the backgrounds, right? We out here. We got some nice weather behind us because in New York right now it is extremely freezing, and it's okay to manifest, right? We about to manifest. <laughs> this way so that's why you see this going on but without further ado newski let's let's get it let's give it to him bro yeah right now i'm in south beach already so i'm in a good mood you know what i'm saying i'm i'm here but yeah y'all so we we obviously learned a lot right a lot happened this year and we want to really break down as much as possible for you guys and the first thing we want to start with is the mental side of things right so when we think mentally in terms of the stock market a lot of people think it's just having to do with money but if your emotions are not in control, you're not gonna be able to be successful when it comes to the financial side, right? So what that really means is something that I learned in this year is you have to, have to, have to understand that's a long-term game. Like, yes, we had a bad market. Yes, it was not beautiful. It was a lot of red. But if you think about it, in 10 years from now, we're not really gonna think about, damn, like, you remember how broke we were in 2022 because we lost 10% of our portfolio? No, because if you're investing over the long time period, it's not gonna matter. And I think that's something a lot of people forget about because they focus on the current moment. That's just yeah. not gonna help you, right? So you have to have a long-term mindset when it comes to investing for the future. That's what yeah. I would say is one of my biggest lessons. Yeah, bro. And we literally was just talking about this before the episode started. Remember, we we went to the compound interest calculator and literally did like realistic calculations for like the type of money you can make by retirement if you just passively invest long term. So that includes going through bear markets and bull markets. And we we came up with something where we could watch somebody come up with $11 million to their name by the time they're 65 passively. I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. so that, that includes time periods like 2022 and time periods like 2020 when stocks are booming. So all the above is a part of the journey. That's that's literally what it takes to be an investor. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. And that's why people run away from the market in a year like this. And they run to the market in a year like 2020. But they don't understand that you need both. You need right. both markets to be successful, you know? And the other, other side of it from what you just mentioned is in order to have that mindset, what you have to understand is to control your emotions. Because just because you feel like you should be buying something right now, does not mean you actually should be buying something right now, right? There, there's a big difference. So a lot of people I know, myself included, wanted to get into real estate in 2021, actually, right? And then even in 2022, I was thinking about it, but just analyzing the market, talking to real estate agents, doing my own research, and then spinning, like going back and forth with REL and even our people that we trust, it didn't make sense to get into real estate at that point because I was like, where is the best deal for me? Yes, I want, to own a house doesn't mean I should own a house, right? Like my money could be working in different situations. And thank God I didn't because one, the prices of homes came down, but my money was able to go into places where now I run multiple businesses because I was able to put my money in that business and it gave me a better return. So you can't just focus on your emotion just because you want to do something. You have to control yourself and really just have, once again, that long-term mindset and surround yourself with people who can bounce ideas off of you to know that, yo, I'm in the right space right now. This is where I should be doing. So yeah, that yeah. that would be my mental side. No, nah, I completely agree, bro. The emotions part is, is so key. Like we've seen it. Even remember when the war started uh, with, with Russia and Ukraine and everything, and everybody just felt like it was the end of the world. And it's like, you got to keep your emotions intact and find opportunities in that. Because, for example, obviously, we're not trying to look for catastrophic events but there's always some way to profit off at the end of the day that's just how the world mm -hmm. works. like if you would have gotten into oil at that time and rode that train you would have been up this year up big because there's literally always a bull market somewhere and so when the catastrophe happened when we have russia and ukraine going up you should have been buying you should have been buying oil stocks you would have been right. up you know what i mean so keep your emotions intact and just, just focus on ways that you could benefit from no matter what's going on like literally staying solution based is the biggest thing i could say when it comes to the mental side and what helps and to stay like solution based, I think, is the patience, right? The patience side of things, because obviously, yo, we keep on stressing long term and we keep on stressing emotion, but that all comes from having patience and practicing the patience, right? Like, yes, just understand that it's OK to be patient and boring when it comes to building wealth. Like, 
being consistent every single day in this finance journey that you're trying to get towards financial freedom is the hardest thing to do. So if you can mentally tell yourself, be consistent in terms of investing every month, be consistent in terms of budgeting every month, because you have to be patient, it's going to go a very long way, right? So stop trying to rush the process. Just enjoy the journey. So I think that is my mental side. Do you have anything to add before we go to financial? Nah, I'm ready to get to financial side. We got, I got a million dollars worth of game for them, bro. We about to, I we bet. About to get right. So let's get into the financial side. If you're watching right now, please do us a favor and like this video also, because we have been working extremely hard for this whole year and it would show us a lot of appreciation and you just like that video but let's keep it going right so financial side of things what we got for them i right, said so the first financial thing i want everybody to uh conceptualize is stock market cycles stock the stock market goes through cycles everything goes through cycles though that's what we also notice this year that it's not just a stock market but i must i'm gonna hone into the stock market for a second so there's something called the accumulation phase Right there's a distribution phase. Right there's there's different phases to the to the to the stock market. Where, for example, there's a time period where everybody's running from stocks, and the only people that's running true stocks is big money. They're buying it at lows, and then they run it up. That's where everybody's participating in the stock market. And then guess what? When everybody's in it, they're like big money's thinking they had like all right, everybody's in, everybody's in. I right, bet let's sell it off. <laughs> And then they, they sell it off because they're taking profits from the people that got into it late. They're taking profits from them. And now that people see that stock prices are falling, guess what they do? They run away. They run away. So now they're selling things at a loss. And then guess what? The cycle repeats. Big money gets their stocks cheap again. They run it up. People participate. They sell it off and just repeat, rinse, repeat. That's how things go. And um, and so it's not, it's obviously not just stocks, like I said, but we literally just witnessed that cycle from 2020 to 2022 we literally saw covid everything got discounted big money got in they made their positions it ran up everybody participated your cousin was talking about stocks your mom your auntie your grandmother everybody was talking about it and then they sold it off as soon as 2022 hit i don't know if that was a tax reason or what but literally the first trading day of 2022 mm -hmm. they sold the heck out of the market we had the biggest sell-off in the stock market since i believe 1932 or nine or something like that. something crazy we we witnessed that they took profits and we're literally we're watching the cycle in, in real life time speed, bro. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing about that, which you just broke down, is understanding the cycles is very important. But the latter part, which is, yo, when everyone is talking about the stock market or real estate market or crypto market or whatever financial instrument they're going towards, that is a sign to understand on the financial side of things that, yo, it might be a little too hot. It's like, the best way to really break it down and even in life is just think about it right when someone is talking about something way too much and you've never heard them talk about it before it's like all right bro like respectfully you never speak about this matter you seem like you're becoming a guru you seem like you're talking about it so much now and you're putting in money and you're looking for quick money if it's too good to be true it seems like it it probably is right exactly. so that that's the financial side of things understanding those markets is so important and i'll be 100 transparent with you guys i was a part of this where when i first started my investment journey i had to learn that the hard way right like you guys should learn from us because when we started to invest we were like oh this is what investing is we made so many mistakes and now we learn from our mistakes and we bring them to you guys so you don't have to learn from your mistakes you can learn from ours right so the cycles is extremely important to understand because you don't want to be buying something worth three hundred dollars when it's really worth a hundred right like you're you're playing yourself and you're never going to be able to get back because some of these companies will not ever get back to their all-time highs that's a fact and mm, let me get to that in a second too that's funny you said that um and like i said like everything goes through a cycle you literally watch the chips right like semiconductor chips they went through a cycle to where they were their prices were overinflated and then they they had to get um the supply in order and now they got demand to catch up and everything it's literally going through a whole cycle. You see that cars and, and news I know you own a whole car business. You've seen it. You see cars get like overpriced, bro. Like cars that shouldn't even be. Hey, I know you've been told me stories about the type of prices they charge you for cars. I don't know. Yeah, you... bro. Like at the end of the day, like if you are seeing and no, no shade to any of these companies, right? But if you're seeing like a Honda Accord going for like 42K, it's like different that doesn't make sense unless like you're getting a different type of model but it's, it's just certain things don't make sense to me in in the car world and 
I just closed on three cars this literally this weekend. I'm like, I told the person, I'm like, yo, I know you're charging a little bit more than I should be paying, but I'll sign the deal just knowing three months when I come back, this will be lower. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand that you have to understand the financial side of things to know where the trend is heading. That's a fact. And then it's funny you say that. So now let's talk like sector rotations within that same realm. It's like something that we should have done um, as investors right back to a community. Something we should have done is said, OK, growth stocks went through a cycle where they were discounted in COVID. Then they ran up toward the later parts of COVID 2021. They were booming everything. And then growth stocks started to sell off in the middle of 2021. Um, even before value stocks started to sell up. So you should have rotated out of growth stocks and found your way into something else that booms in bear markets, for example, energy. So you, if you would have taken profits from growth stocks, like the, everyone that, you know, Kathy Woods was invested into, all those ones that everybody named Mama was talking about that had crazy runs, got your money from there, reinvested it into oil or energy stocks when they were low, rode the train right now in 2022 probably 2023 as well i feel like energy is still gonna run personally then take profits from that and then reinvest it back into tech and growth stocks at lows so now you have you you literally preserved your profits right mm-hmm. because so many people watch their money run all the way up you was probably up 100 percent your portfolio and now you're down 90%. never sold Never <laughs> and that's the thing like, i think that's that's so annoying because um i'm not gonna lie guys like trust me all the things i'm telling you guys i personally have experience in my journey growing right like i remember before i had a company i was up 300 percent and i didn't sell it right and then i ended up selling it 100 percent. you would think it's great but it's like bozo you could have had it at 300 you messed up so like that's extremely important in terms of knowing when to sell is a financial lesson that you guys should learn from this time period and even i know you said growth stocks and then just consumer staples right like you guys have to please understand that certain companies are always going to be worth it right you're always going to need food right you're always going to need water you're always going to need to get like paper towels all all those things are always going to be necessities so like a costco is going to be there right you have to brush your teeth you need toothpaste so sometimes rather than rocking out with companies guys and this is a please don't take this a disrespectful way 99 percent of you shouldn't even be investing in individual stocks so that's a lesson for you guys that just rock with etfs like being boring is okay you're getting money regardless i don't care if someone gets a 30 percent return and you get a 10 percent return you're still making more than you had earlier right and you're being safer with it so don't panic and be like i gotta hit a home run Derek Cheater made a whole career out of hitting regular base hits, and then he's one of the best of all time. Yeah, and and bro, we were literally just talking about this before the episode as well. We were talking about like how our ETFs are doing compared to our individual stocks. It's, Jesus Christ! <laughs> night and day, Jesus right, Christ. bro? I'm still up. Like with this terrible market, the last two years, I'm still six percent up, I believe, in my S and P 500 account. It's just crazy, yeah. and it's like. Bro, we've seen it go terrible, but that's just because I chose to be boring. I chose to every single month, just DCA, DCA, DCA. And I'm like, yeah, y'all are struggling. I'm kind of up right now. Like, I'm not too panicked. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm okay. Bro, I mean, look at it. Like, there's companies that we all know and love. Like, for example, Tesla. We just seen Tesla just get sold the heck off at historic levels. It's really sad to see. And honestly, that just shows you right there. Even companies that you feel like are are just, you know, indestructible. Mm-hmm. Listen, they had a day, bro. Every dog has their day. And and so never put your faith into just one company because you could watch your network go before your eyes. A lot of people got margin called in the past, this past week. Um, and and something I always said about Tesla that made me weary about it is is Elon. Elon is as a very uh, polarizing figure and so his words could literally take away your whole entire investment portfolio if you have all your money in tesla just by him saying certain words and making certain actions and so i love tesla don't get me wrong i really do and i think people should you know i would recommend it to people still i'm just saying that this is why it's better to get into etfs because if you're leaving your, your money in the hands of one man one ceo and look what happens right now people just went broke that were literally wealthy that's a fact and now i think that is everything in terms of learning lessons in terms of the stock market right now let's just trans change this into the crypto market a little bit 
it's pretty similar, guys. Like, I don't think much really changes when it comes to understanding the phases that we spoke about earlier, right? And if you carry forward the mental notes into the financial sector, you'll realize that one, have patience, right? I completely understand that. And understand that when it goes in different phases, this might just be the accumulation phase that everyone's been asking for. So you have to understand that, like if big money is buying and people aren't talking about it as much, yo, this might be the time to attack when it comes to crypto. But keep in mind, stop gambling your money in crypto stocks or I'm sorry, crypto just coins in cryptocurrency that don't make sense. Like unless right. it has actual value, you shouldn't invest in it. You guys are trying to hit a home run. We're never going to see a 300% run up in a single day for crypto that makes sense, right? Because if crypto that makes sense, you're not going to see all of a sudden money getting pumped and then dumped the next day. No. That, that, that doesn't make sense. So yes, your uncle might tell you to do this and your friend might tell you to do this. Let them do it. It's okay if you miss it. Y'all need to understand it's okay if you miss a boat, bro. You're not going to bag the baddest girl in every club. As long as you bag certain ones, you're good. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to always go crazy. That's all you right. have to understand that. Like put the principles of life into financial notes and you'll be all right. That's a fact, bro. Like crypto, we we literally just watched <laughs> like you said, like it's just like meme stocks, bro. We we watched these pump and dumps and so many people lost money. More people lost money than made money and them little pump mm -hmm. and dumps. So it's like just stay away from that. And and also like I understand that big money moves markets. So I know retail, you talk to your everyday person, they like, yo, crypto, crypto, crypto. I love crypto, don't get me wrong. But as soon as big money's not involved in something, you see what happens to a whole asset class. They ran they ran away when we had all these exchanges failing. And so it's like until we get regulation, that that big money is not going to come back into crypto until we get regulation for real. And mm -hmm. so it's like it's important to to follow the money, something we always say. And while you wait for that process on crypto, because I believe it's coming, Nuski believes it's coming, keep your crypto on a ledger. And we have a ledger available for you. If you click the link in the description box on our link tree, we have a ledger for you to buy right there. We also have an episode that we dropped that told you guys our opinion on crypto's future and how we see it going. And the fact that there are still companies that are heavily allocating into crypto in this bear market of crypto, because like I said, the accumulation stage, they like to get in low. So that's kind of like everything I had to say on crypto. Yeah, I think just remember guys, like, Everything we're saying right now, we have experience and we'd love to hear what you guys have as well. So if you have any notes, just comment below as well. And let's talk about real estate, right? So I know we hinted on it earlier, but in terms of real estate, once again, if y'all noticing a cycle and a pattern here, it's because there is one. Everything goes in phases, right? When all of a sudden people are buying real estate and there's so much cash on hand and people are paying $200,000, $300,000 above asking. And that's not, I wish I was making that number up. People are literally doing that. There might be something wrong, right? You guys have to start looking at trends. Like, yo, we see inflation is going crazy. We see people are printing money left and right. Now, all of a sudden we see that people are still paying above asking. There's probably a reason for this, y'all. Like, come on, start you know, putting pieces together. And that's when you have to understand, take a step back and say, can I actually afford this house? Does it fit my budget? Does it actually make sense? Or am I taking on too much leverage and buying something because I think it makes sense, right? There's a difference between you thinking and being emotional versus you having the numbers down on a budget sheet where you're like, yo, this makes sense. You shouldn't buy a property unless you already know if you're going to be profitable or not. Remember that's that right. we talked about this in all our real estate videos that we have. You yep. should already know the numbers before you buy the property. Yep. And and we have a calculator available for you in the, the same link tree and our description box. We have a real estate calculator that you can know your numbers on whether you're going to be profitable on a property that you, you're trying to acquire. And if you don't know how to go through that calculator, we have an episode for that. So check the Rookie Mondays playlist. We have a whole episode for that. And just even on the real estate side, it kind of leads into credit. And I'm just saying that credit is key. That's something you learned this year as well. If you had good credit, you were able to take advantage of the best interest rates back Jeez. when, you know, back in 2020, 2021, you got the best interest rates. And then now in a high interest rate environment in 2022, you were also able to get the better interest rates because the interest rates are mm -hmm. advertised as far as like, oh, the Fed raised rates and interest rates for the houses, this number, guess what? That's for the best interest rate. That's for the best credit. Now, if you have bad credit, you're actually get a worse rate than what they advertise. And so you want to make sure that your credit is up to par. And even for credit in general, when you're buying things on credit cards, you can't afford 
and then the Fed raises interest rate, guess what? Now you're going to be paying way higher for items than you ever would have just because you didn't get your credit right. So that's another yeah. lesson to take on the credit side. And I, uh, like a story on that one real quick. I just, I told you guys, we just bought some cars right now in the last week, right? The last weekend has just passed. I'm letting you know, true story. We walked in, they were like, yo, um, we'll get you to run your credit. We'll let you know how everything goes. I was like, don't even bother. Here's my rate. I already know it. Like, because I know my credit score is really good. Like it's excellent. So I know what rate I'm getting. You can't beat it. You can't match it because Bro, I already got the best one. And that happens because I built my credit over time. That's why it's super important to understand credit. So that, that's what I got to say on that side. For a fact. And then, you know, just kind of leading in now. So you talk about credit, we talk about interest rates. Um, just a quick point to make is just the economy. Make sure y'all pay attention to the economy. And because the economy and the Federal Reserve literally dictated what 2022 looks like. We learned this year, especially that Jerome Powell, is the most powerful man in the world more powerful than the president or anybody because literally his decisions or his federal reserve decisions on interest rates quantitative tightening which is just kind of the flow of money throughout the economy those decisions have determined everybody's uh reality right now as as, as well as their upcoming reality because we have layoffs that are going to be booming in 2023 we've already seen tech have a lot of layoffs but layoffs should circulate their way through the economy even more as the 2023 comes around and a lesson i'll tell you guys from that is to learn a skill and make sure that you also are providing value at your job never feel like you're too secure because obviously a lot of people got laid off and if you didn't build a you know a reputation of somebody that they can't let go because you're just so valuable then you're now disposable and so make sure you learn a skill so you're always self-sufficient and if you're even in a corporate job make sure that you're providing enough value to where they can't get rid of you even if the economy is, is falling yeah yeah no i think the economy part is definitely valid in the sense that y'all have to understand how interest rates work we broke that down for you guys please check those videos out interest rate inflation they're, they're going opposite directions, right? So you have to understand how that happens when the Fed is doing something, how that impacts the economy. We just had a whole year where they basically gave us a prime example of how this occurs, why this occurs, and what happens when interest rates go up or down, right? So please make sure you're taking notes on everything here. It's very, very important. And just to let y'all know, this is going to happen again. Like, it, it's not that this goes away, this never happens. No, in 20 years, 10 years, we're gonna have another recession. We're gonna have another bear market. It happens all the time. So lessons you learn right now today is gonna help you become a millionaire and gain that financial status and gain that financial freedom down the line, right? Yeah. So extremely important to understand. Yeah, and, and with that being said, it's like the last thing I want y'all to know is to please learn everything for yourself, okay? Because right now we've invested into ourselves to learn this knowledge. We need y'all to do the same. And yes, we're gonna teach you. This is a way to invest in yourself is tuning in the bag. So, so make sure you subscribe. But there's a lot of gurus, quote unquote, financial gurus that were telling you to buy companies and everything at all time highs. And you see what, what happened, right? So you want to make sure you learn for yourself cycles. You want to learn how to break down charts with technical analysis. You want to learn about real estate, everything for your own. So you don't end up in a situation where you go broke at the next bear market, but you take advantage. So that's all I would say. That's the whole 2022 wrap up right there. Yeah, that was a lot. Um, I mean, I hope y'all, I hope y'all are still here. I hope y'all listening. Um, but definitely make sure that you guys are taking notes and take care of yourself to end the year strong, right? Because that's what matters. Um, we're gonna have another fire episode for you guys on Wednesday. Um, and make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel like always. Plus, hit that little notification bell because we drop two videos a week, and you don't want to miss them. All right, we're gonna check you out later. Until then, peace. Peace. Soundstripe.